Yo, what's up, everyone? I'm Cole Frazier. I'm um, here with Terry Presume. We're going to talk about music. We talk about life. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm vibing, bro. How about you? Been pretty good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Where are you at these days? Um, I know that you are based in Nashville. Is that correct? Nah, I, I was based in Nashville. Um, I'm currently in Florida right now. Um, but I was based out of Nashville for, for a little bit. But I'm originally from Florida. Okay. Uh, that's where I'm at right now. Okay. And in one of your songs, you talk about living in, like, were you living in the Bay Area in California for a little bit? No, I was living in L.A. I, I was okay. living out in L.A. I, I wasn't out in the Bay, but L.A. Yes, L.A. Oh, okay. Hawthorne. Starting to break up again. Okay, we're back. We're back. We're back. And uh, what have you been up to music-wise? I, I know that we haven't we haven't heard any new stuff from you this year, right? It was twenty twenty two was your last release. Yeah, twenty twenty two was my last release. Um, and it wasn't even a a release of like mine per se officially. Like it was a song of mine for sure, but it it got on a collaborative project by uh, Pigeons and Planes, the song Loner, which was really fun, but I've been working on a lot of new music, man. And, you know, for the past few years, I've been working on a lot of music. Um, I have a lot of music stored up. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm working on a, a project right now. It's it's supposed to be an EP, but the way that it's it's molding together, bro, it's seeming like an album, low-key. So we'll just see how everything, you know, comes around. And, um, yeah, but that's what I'm working on right now, musically. Oh, yeah. What was that... Um... Did you get to work hand in hand with Mike Dean on that Pigeon and Planes project? Or is that something where he sent you like a, a demo or like a, a, a beat? No, nah, so so what happened was I worked with the, uh, all right, I wrote the song in my bedroom. No, I wrote the song in the apartment, like all by myself, like in the, in the moment of things. And then I brought it to the studio and I worked on, on the beat uh with a really cool engineer producer friend of mine that goes by cappy um he's insanely talented the man's lit shit i fuck with him and um i brought the song to him and i basically was like yo i got the song i have this melody uh but i need a beat around it and he's like he's listening to everything he's like yo bet like i got it and then um i just basically laid everything down and watched him just uh produce a song around the melodies and uh afterwards that song gets picked up by Pigeons and Planes. Okay. Uh, I guess they heard it. They liked it. They're like, yo, I want to fuck with uh, this song for a collaborative uh, project. And I thought it was a cool thing. I love being part of something collaborative. So I was like, all right, cool. And then, um, it, bro, it came as a surprise to me. I'm just in L.A. one day. Uh, I can't remember what I was doing. I, I was about to go perform at a festival, but I had some, like, studio time lined up out there in LA and I was supposed to work with some producers to get things situated and then uh, I get contacted by a label mate and, and they're like yo, yo, yo like you're, you got a meeting with Mike Dean like in in an hour or something like that and I'm like what the fuck like <laughs> that shit just random as fuck bro I'm like how you just gonna don that on me I'm like yeah. bro what the fuck is <laughs> that and I, re intense and I remember I'm just like it, bro it was I'm like bro what the fuck and I remember I'm just chilling I'm just like bro like damn, bro, like, you know, you know, you got to just stay ready so you don't get ready in any scenario. But I'm just like, fuck, like, he's a legend in this shit. So I was just like, yeah. it's just, it's so random, bro. Like, that's like yeah. somebody just telling you you're about to meet with the fucking president or some shit, like, on a whim. Like, what you mean? Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but basically, Notice. right. So so I basically ended up um, meeting with him. And he he's heard the song. And Pigeons and Planes, I guess, set the whole thing up. And... You know, I get in, in the car and I'm I'm driving to like, you know, meet up with him and I'm asking the label mate, I'm like, how long have you known about this? And he's like, Oh, for some time now. Fuck, bro. So <laughs> either way, you know, I I get I get up with him and then we're in the studio. He has a wonderful house and his studios are amazing, they're beautiful. His sound systems, they're the shit. And we basically just, you know, chopped up and he's saying, like, yo, like, great song, great song. You know how Mike Dean talks. He's like, Yeah, uh, this song right here. He takes a rip out of a bowl. He's like, out of a bong. He's like, <laughs> he's like, it's a good song. It's a good song. And then he's like, yo, I'm liking it. So he he, did, he decided to bless it, which is okay. an honor. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful for that. And he decided to bless it. He's like, you know, I like it, but I feel like it's, it's, it's missing a little something. 
And he ended up adding his like final touches towards the end where he was just like, he went dumb crazy with the sense, you know, he sent God. So yeah, uh, that's crazy. how all of that happened. But yeah, I was in the room with him while it all happened, man. Definitely, bro. I tell you what though, man, my nerves was definitely, they're working. They're working for sure. That <laughs> That's crazy. And the, that like whole kind of like, that's, I don't, was that kind of like a, like, was that just like a, it seemed like Pigeon and Plane was trying to do kind of like an XXL kind of like thing with that. Like what was, do you know what kind of their their thought process? Is that going to be a recurring thing? Um, I was trying to understand exactly what it was or if it was just them just putting out an album, you know? You know, that that's a real funny thing because I, I just be going with the flow a lot of times. I, I'll try to get a little bit, you know, uh, what can I say? I'll try to like, you know, pull out the, the magnifying glasses and just like look over things if I feel called to, but I didn't feel called to at the moment. But what I sensed was, yeah, XXL is a very good um comparison thing right there because that's what I felt like. I felt like I was being a part of something new, essentially, you know. I know XXL has its a uh, freshman class and things of that nature that like reoccurs every year. So I assumed just by, you know, meeting everybody and seeing how everything was. I was like, oh, so this is kind of like this, but it's newer, it's fresher, it's it's with a different face and different energy. And I liked it a lot. So I, under the assumption, thought, yeah, yeah, this is going to be something that reoccurs, you know, every year, every year, every year. And it's called See You Next Year. So it just, it's beautiful. Everything yeah. makes sense to me. And um, it's definitely a reoccurring thing too, because they have See You Next Year too um, coming out. So I'm extremely excited for that too. And I see the artists are like, now going at um uh recording at Rick Rubin's spot and I thought that was oh, so that's I was crazy. like that's literally shit yeah no that's, that's crazy. crazy and I'm like I was like that's one thing I would have held out a whole year if I if I known that <laughs> if I you knew you, if you would have got to meet Rick Rubin you know what I'm saying like and you know I I still think that's still in the in the book somewhere you know I just have to let life do life but um yeah. but definitely yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a fun experience for sure and uh did you get to meet everyone that was like on the album um did i get to meet them all like in person yeah during that so so it's funny all right um i no, i didn't get to meet everyone on the project um i met a i feel like i would like to say i met like the majority of everyone around the time because we all had to like come to new york and shoot um the music videos and we all shot the music videos relatively close. It, they had basically like day one and whoever was on day one to record their music videos and take their photos, that's what that was. And then they had day two, which, which was the same thing. And, and it'd be a different group of artists that had to take their pictures, do the interview, record the videos, music videos and everything. But I didn't get to meet everyone. Some people, fun fact, um, uh, some people were Photoshopped into the into the cover art that yeah i could weren't there you could tell like you could tell that like like i think like the brev and kim like off to the yeah. side like they look like they're photoshopped in um yeah you could definitely tell there was that's why i was curious i was like is this like a completely like remote covid style like everyone on zoom calls like this like making an album come together or if it was more like in-person collaborative so it, it it definitely was in person, but I'll tell you what, though, it was definitely more like a collective thing where I got to meet these people through Pigeons and Planes. I think Pigeons and Planes, they were like kind of like, you know, the the puppeteers, if you will. Not to say that we're puppets because we're not, we're artists, but yeah. you know, they they like guided and controlled everything. Um, you know, they picked out the artists, they they chose the songs from each artist, and I got to meet some of them, you know, during the set. And I thought everyone was cool, everybody that I got to meet. Granted, I got to meet some of the people that I didn't meet then, like, following. Like, Brevin Kim, I ended up meeting Brevin Kim um, at, at Complex Con. I met Brevin Kim at Complex Con. If I'm lying, fuck, I'm flying, fuck, I forgot. Like, I might I, I might have forgot, but I feel like it was Complex Con that I met them at. Yeah. They're really cool dudes. Uh, I met Tizo Touchdown at Complex Con. Um, and, you know, we're all artists, so people, weren't always available to like be in New York at the same time and things of that nature. So I understood why they had to Photoshop and things like that. I saw there was a, a picture with you and um 
an ecstasy like at a at a show or something so i was like maybe it looked like they were like backstage somewhere with with ecstasy um that's that's recent yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. recent i love um, him I fuck, he's, he's such a talented guy no i fuck with ecstasy that's my boy you know uh I'm, i met him it's funny uh going to the shoot for see you next year i'm leaving the hotel room that morning and I'm with I'm with my girlfriend at the time, and I'm like, yo, I see I see uh ecstasy, but I, I I'm not familiar with him at the moment at all. So I'm just like, yo, this kid. I, I seen the way that uh he appeared, and I was like, I was like, I fucking love his pants. I was like, that kid looks cool as shit. I fuck with him, but I don't know nothing about him. I, I'm just seeing him exit the building, and then uh I go to see you next year. And there he is, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, that's a fucking kid with the cool pants, bro. I was like, what the fuck? So I approached him, you know, we, we chopped up, dapped up. And uh, yeah, just as of recently, I was just performing at Omaha. I was in Omaha and uh, it was fun. And, and I got to, you know, reunite with him over there. We chopped up about everything. And he was like, yo, Terry, like you, you fucking here. Yeah, he's super talented. I love that guy, man. Yeah, he's he's really, he's someone that I've been listening to for a while now. And my, my buddy, Liam Reardon, who's a, a DP, he does a lot of ecstasy's music videos and like um i don't know what label uh ecstasy signed to but they did like a mini like docu like documentary style like content for him and my my friend liam did the the camera work for that um so he's like yeah he's he's someone i really fuck with he's he makes really nice yeah. cool but so you're from you're from florida what part of florida are you from I'm from uh, Naples, Florida, specifically uh, a place called Golden Gate. It's like a city within a smaller, it's a smaller city within the city. But yeah, I'm from uh, Naples, Florida, Golden Gate all day. That's just what I'm repping. I love where I'm from. And when did you, when did you first leave, leave Florida? Because you went to Nashville for a little bit. Okay, so I, I left Florida and I went to California. That's, you know, a lot of people don't know that. I feel like a lot of people, they're, like, kind of confused as to where I'm from, where I'm at, and things of that nature. Um, I'm not really the type to, like, be all mysterious and try to, like, hide away from people and things of that nature. Um, I, I'm just, like, naturally a recluse, but I don't do this to, like, be, like, oh, away. Like, if you get to talk to me, I'll probably, like, let you know whatever. Uh, but, no, nah, I was, um, I left, I left Florida, like, 2015 going on to 2016 around that time and uh i went to la I, I was going through shit with my moms at the time and things of the nature living situation just went really bad and i was just like for some weird reason my head was just like fuck it bro you don't got nothing to your name right now i kind of hated where i was at i felt like there's no growth musically um for me where i was at and just even more than musically i just felt like just there's an opportunity for me to become somebody else like a different version of myself and I wanted to be that. I didn't know what it was, but I didn't know what it was, but I felt a calling that like was like, you know, go to LA. So I basically packed up and left to LA with like 200 bucks in my pockets. It was, I had a shitty ass experience at first, man. And I'll tell you, it, it sucked, but a couple of people moved out from um, where I'm from and they went to LA and basically I was able to like have like kind of like a stable housing type situation with them and then um after that I stayed there up until like 2018 no 2019 I stayed there until like 2019 I met my music manager you know things are like type going crazy um this is around the time Dominic Fike is blowing up and people are just like I feel like I'm not sure, but I feel like the industry was kind of like, yo, 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 we, we need to know who's from here, who's from here, who's from here. I just so happen to be from here, too. So, you know, I, I caught my like I got a manager. I caught the attention of a manager, basically, who reached out to me. and was like, yo, I'm trying to um, I, I love your music. I want to work. And I was like, all right, cool. And my housing situation was just going to shit in L.A. at the time, too, because I didn't have nothing to my name still at the moment. So I'm like, all right, bet. Uh. I, I, I didn't want to go back home, though. I still didn't want to go back home. So I called my older brother, which I knew was living in Nashville, basically. And I was like, yo, bro, like, I don't know what I got to do if I got to come work and whatever the case is. But, you know, I'll sleep on the floor or on the couch or whatever. But I was like, I just don't feel like I, I want to go back to Florida right now. He's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. He's like, I, I actually got an extra room open. I'm moving into a bigger apartment. I was like, all right, bet. 
and I moved into Nashville and that's probably like the greatest move I've ever made in my life. It was so necessary because my, my songwriting skyrocketed just, just from breathing the air, really, you know, I'm around all these like really dope creatives. I picked up the guitar while I was out there, man. I learned so much from Nashville, bro. Nashville owes me Nathan for sure, bro. Nathan, but yeah, that's, that's how everything went. And then I ended up moving back down here to Florida, but I'm planning a, another move too shortly, but okay. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck between two places. Okay. So when you were talking about, is Dominic Fike also from Naples? Is that kind of the, the connection or were, were the, the labels just looking for South Florida musicians? Okay. You know, I, I can't say nothing about the labels per se, because I didn't even link up with a label um, once I moved to Nashville. Uh, think I was just with the manager. I just had a manager who wasn't tied to no labels, no nothing. I, I had offers kind of come in um, that I turned down and turned down. But yeah, he is from Naples. But there was just uh, other things at play. Um, things didn't happen for me, not for a while. I kind of just like really just had to like hone in and bust down and I was working on heli music and I just had a fire under my ass that I was just like one day I was at work and I was like bro I don't want to do this shit no more bro so I started sending music to every blog that I could big or small it didn't matter bro like and if they were willing to hear it and listen to it I was willing to like just put it out there and let everybody know like yo these people just put me on their blogs like go check that out and 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 that's what I was doing and I landed a um a Spotify place placement on a playlist that I like fucking just I wrote like two sentences to them just two sentences I'm like bro like I made this song in my bedroom this shit's fucking lit I you know I'm not the biggest artist but like I love this song and it meant a lot to me and I posted it up and the next thing I know they like posted me on like a, a very big Spotify playlist and that's where you know I what think song was industrial that? uh it was a song called mama okay yeah and that's that, that on, was where is that on a is that on Spotify still, Mama? Is that on your the Terry compilation or like the is that on that album or is that a single? Man, my memory be like shitty as fuck. So <laughs> I can't I can't tell you yes or no, but I feel like it's a no. I feel like it's a no. I don't think it's on there okay. anymore. But it was though that was the song that basically like caught the attention of like people. And I remember once it got placed, I think. For some weird reason, like it felt almost as if like I was in a territory where like people were kind of like confused as to how I even got there. Like, yo, 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 wait, 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 how how is this kid even on this project, bro? Like, oh, she don't make no sense. Like, how's he on this playlist? That's what I mean. It don't even make no sense. But um, yeah, people started reaching out crazy, and then you know I'm turning this people, this person down, turning that person down, turning them down. I'm like, no, 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 no. I said a lot of no's before I got I got to a yes, but then I you know. Um, the label that I'm with right now is an independent label that okay. started out in the UK and, you know, a representative from their, their squad basically like contacted me and I didn't even know who they were, but I just liked their energy. And I was like, yeah. okay, cool. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll fuck with this dude for a little longer, whatever the case may be. And yeah, moving forward. And that's what happened. Um, shit, a lot, bro. Oh yeah. So what's the, do you have like a, a date on the calendar where you know that there's going to be a new single coming out or are you you still kind of waiting to see where where that's going to fall um i don't i don't per se have a date on the calendar for for a single to be coming out um i would like something to come out rather sooner than later there's a lot that goes into this thing that now, now that i'm seeing for me if you leave it up to me into my hands i'm just going to release something like yeah. i'm i'm that type i'm just going to let something go like I know a lot of times we have to like be mindful about like the way we promote things and how we push things. But sometimes I, I think that just takes away from like the magic that the universe has to offer us, bro. Like, you know, yeah. I, you can't, you, you, but, but on the same token, I see where that is actually a big pro. You know, I see where it's like when you're extremely intentional with your artwork and you're extremely intentional about your rollouts and things of that nature. But I also think that there's, there's magic and just, you know, throwing things out on a whim and seeing, you know, what sticks on the wall. You know, we just throwing yeah. shit on at the wall and we've seen what sticks. But now I don't have a I don't have a date right now. And my my mind with the singles, they'll just like I'll be like liking this song one day and then I'll be like, no, this is a perfect song one day. I want something to definitely the next single that I release to like be something that represents me. 
extremely well. That's how I feel. Like I wanted to be like, this is who I am right now. This is what the next project. I want the next single to allude to the next project uh, very well. I want it to be a hint. But I have two singles in mind right now currently. But, you know, these, these are conversations that I have to have with my team now too. So yeah. I don't have a date. Yeah, I'm just excited for new music. You've been the you've been my number one artist that I've just been on repeat. And I, I was looking and I was like, damn, he hasn't released in a while. I was like, where the fuck is Terry at? Like, I need some new music to listen to. But you you have enough discography. I can just put that shit on loop and just constant hits. So I'm uh, yeah, but listen, still going to be I, listening. I want, I want to, I want to, um, you know, I want to give more music. You know what I'm saying? I feel like when I release music out into the world, bro, like it, it's it's a form of release literally for myself as well. Like, it's like, I'm not harboring any of these feelings emotions or thoughts anymore the moment I let I let it out and I let it go it's like okay now this is for someone else to hear and be able to say like damn somebody else feels the same way that I felt or damn somebody else sees things the way that I see I feel like with this music shit so deep bro you have people that like are really out here um in need of your words you know what I'm saying you just never know like you can really change somebody's life bro like they'll listen to your shit and like change their mind for the better and i think that's extremely powerful so the more i hold music it really does bother me in that aspect i'm aware that like damn bro like this shit can mean something for someone it's extremely meaningful for people i think this shit can get really spiritual but let me not get too deep on that though yeah i i, I completely understand but I, I like to kind of like move the conversation about like more about you and like a little bit less about music. I think we've talked a lot about music. Um, growing up in Naples, like what was that like growing up there? Like when you were in high school, when you were younger, like what were you into? Were you like a skate kid? Were you a kid that was watching anime? Like who was Terry growing up? Like let us let us in a little bit. Damn. All right, man. That's that's all right. Cool. So Terry growing up. First and foremost, I was like, I keep trying to say, like, you know how like you can be in a in a city or a state, but like you could be in a state, but a certain city or inside of that state doesn't really represent it really entirely. That's how I feel about Golden Gate in Naples. Like I'm Naples born, but I feel like, bro, like I'm so golden gated. Like that's just that that we talk different there. We have a different swag there too. You know what I'm saying? Like the activities that go on inside of that is just it's just a little bit more different. Like the kids uh in the other schools in Naples, they look down at Golden Gate High, Golden Gate Middle School, Golden Gate Elementary School. We was called Golden Ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. and, and and I abide, I abide by that shit. Like I for me, I love it. That's cause it's it's history for me. But growing up in the gates, bro. I'll say like this, bro, like the type of kid that I was starting off real early on, like I love music. I love creativity. I love to dance, bro. Like that was just my shit. I like break dancing early on. I was a break dancer. Um, but I always loved making music and writing poems and shit like that at a very early age, very, very early age. Uh, as much as I could like sneak away to like record some music, I would, bro. Like I was doing things against my parents' wishes to like, you know, record some music. Um, they're completely ass looking back at it, but you know, you, you, you're like setting down pavements for like building blocks and, and things of that nature for your future, but you're not noticing it in the moment because you're just living in the moment. But I was basically, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm out there just hanging out with my friends. I'm definitely an anime kid, you know, that came across uh, at a certain point. I'm definitely, you know, an anime kid. I love watching me some anime, but I'm definitely like, I always like to like paint myself as like the ghetto nerd, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm definitely with the shits, but I'm going to calculate everything before I, I make my move. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just going to be no re ridiculously dumb person. Like I'm not, I'm not going to do some dumb shit just for the fuck of fuck of it, but I have done dumb shit for the fuck of it though. But mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, that's part of like, you know, people pleasing and growing up, but young Terry, man, if I look back at young Terry, I'm, I'm seeing young Terry. He's just, He's dancing, he's making music, um, he's getting arrested for doing stupid shit, even though he's smarter and, and knows better than to do the stupid shit that he's doing, but he's hanging around with all these older kids. When I was a young boy, I was just, um, I'm hanging out with kids that's like 
three to five years older than me. Like, I, I was the youngest, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really hanging around with my group of friends up until, like, high school. That's when I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to hone in and hang out primarily with, like, people uh, closer to my age group. But, you know, I had a rap group that I started in middle school because I was rap. I was doing a whole bunch of rap battles in middle school and people started like catching on fire with me. They like, damn, like, yo, Terry's rap battling, rap battling, rap battling. And I'm just coming off the head. Like I'm just freestyling. And I remember at a point, like everybody was running up to me to rap battle. Like people was writing rhymes and coming up to me with their little papers and shit. Like they like, yo, hey, hey, rap battle me right now. I'm like, bro, you came out prepared and shit. Like, but I would still do it. And it was fun, you know. Um, you know, I created a rap, uh, a rap group after that with me and two other homies of mine, and it was called 932 Bangers. It's basically the area code of uh, Naples, and it's 239, but we put it backwards, and we call it 932 Bangers. And we started we, we started recording music and putting it out on MySpace and shit like that, bro, way back when. And, uh, the MySpace you know, people, days. MySpace days, bro. Like, <laughs> Those were the were days. Catching on. People were catching on. They fucking with it. Um... And, uh, you know, we just kept going. And I remember, bro, like, people was not, like, extremely fucking with it at the time. People loved it and people hated it. But the hate was so strong. Like, sometimes you, you missed out on the love that you was getting in the moment. But I, I remember, bro, that's why I always tell people never give up on what you're doing. Because some of the same people that were, like, downplaying me, telling me and the homies to stop doing what we're doing. Like, ah, ah da, 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 they came back around. And it's no shade. Cause they cool ass people. It takes a lot of humility to come back around and say, "Listen, bro, like your shit's dope as fuck." You know what I'm saying? Like that shit's hard, you know? Cause they could have still been stubborn and just been like, "Ah, I don't care. I don't like that shit." But you know, they had humility and I respect that. And they came back around. And was like, "Nah, bro, like, yo, we was wrong about that. Like, you guys are actually tough as fuck." So you know, I'm doing things like that. I had a, I had um, after nine three two bangers, that that's all happening in in middle school. High school comes around. I'm a, uh, you know, I'm I'm still nine three two bangers is still kind of a thing, but it's breaking down. And I'm part of a collective called Timeless, and we just was just a bunch of kids that was like fucking around. Like just think of Odd Future, just yeah. down here. You know what I'm saying? Like we just yeah. doing some, we doing reckless shit. We breaking into like abandoned houses, smoking weed, fucking um, stealing beach cruisers. We all had this thing about beach cruisers. I don't know what the fuck it was. Uh, we we were we were going through like super lengths just to steal beach cruisers. Like if you guys could see what the fuck we was doing for the beach cruisers, it made no sense. I look back at them like, why, bro? Why the I'm fuck? I'm just imagining like seven kids riding around on beach cruisers and beach cruisers. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a music video idea for you. <laughs> so, so we 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 uh you know we used to do stuff like that. Um definitely I, I got into like photography and, and videography as well I, you know i took digital designs in um middle school up to high school all the way through high school like i always kind of had like a knack for these things so even me like i love being in front of the camera and behind the camera both yeah. both ways I, I i love both um i think magic lies in front and behind and um yeah bro uh after timeless you know things things happened a lot of my homies got arrested some people caught some serious charges bro it, it, was, it was it was really bad but timeless occurred that's this is happening around like uh let's say high school and then um i i wouldn't say like we the the group broke up but like just life took us different paths and you know people moved away people got arrested and things of that nature people grew and i used to live on a street called 17th Ave and we basically like used to link up at my mom's crib all the time because I was like that kid that basically got the green light, the first green light from their parents to to be like, you can smoke weed just out back of the crib. You know what I'm saying? Like I had a real conversation with my mom. She found out I was smoking weed. She didn't like that shit. She didn't like
just to honor like the street that we all used to come on and just like just just be reckless at. And you know, we we traveled, we did a few performances and shit of that nature. It was fun. That's all I gotta say. It it, it definitely for sure. I had to mute my mic there for a little bit because the dogs were barking like crazy. But so you don't you're talking about all this music history and the farthest we got back for you is like 2019 on on Spotify. Um, is there like this this secret log of like MySpace, like on MySpace of like all your records on there? Like, is it all on SoundCloud somewhere? Is there a way to find that music or is, is that all that shit been buried a long time ago? There's 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 um, I got, you know, heli shit for sure. Probably on SoundCloud. It's not even probably on SoundCloud. There is on it is on SoundCloud. Here's the thing. When I left Florida and I went to LA, a lot of people don't know. Like I was escaping the. We had all right. We were curating a small music, a small music scene down here. But I was escaping a lot of like little fuckeries that I was seeing that I just wasn't liking. And I was just like, yo, like this thing is like getting very. Um, how can I say superficial? It was getting superficial real fast, bro. Um, you know, you can definitely honor and favor another person without shitting on another person. It, it just felt like people were just stepping on heads just just to step on heads. And I ain't like that. You know, I was like, okay, cool. Let me let me step away. Um, so I basically stepped away from like the little group that I used to hang out with and things of that nature. And once I flew out to LA because of what happened with my moms and stuff like that, like the universe would have it, I deleted all my socials. I deleted my Instagram, I deleted my Twitter, I deleted everything. And then I came back and I came back another alias and under that alias was called Pitch Black. That's what I came under and I was recording music and a lot of it was just grungy rock like as shit. Like, you know, you think about like, it was really on some golf boy click type shit. Like I was really on like, so I was releasing shit like that and um, just dropping crazy bars, though, too, and making a lot of just dope music out in L.A., but under another alias. So people don't even know that. But for people who do know and who have been around since, you know, a very early stage, they know. I also have people, you know, uh, DM me and be like, yo, pitch. Like, yo, it's fucking you. Hey, pitch. Like, you know, so that's that's a little fun fact about it, too. But I definitely have a shit ton of music in. You know, I've lost a lot more music than I've released. You know, I've recorded like, you know, I've I've lost like hundreds of songs at a time due to like my computer just fucking up. And that's happened to me several times. Um, I've had backup drives and then I'll plug in the backup drives. Backup drives are now, are now breaking on me. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? I feel like so much things have tried to stop me from doing music and I just kept on prevailing. I just kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. I always found a different way to look at it. Be like, okay, cool. I haven't found what it is that I need to do yet or what I have to say yet in in that case. But yeah, I definitely have a, sh you know, it goes back to 2019, some of the earliest Spotify releases, but it goes back even further than that too. Um, For sure, for sure. But a lot of, a lot of everything is, is on private. I feel like one of these days people will hear everything and be like, oh shit, because on my SoundCloud, I had a project called the book of terry and it basically was just everything and everyone i've ever been and and it was all on there it was probably like a hundred songs or a hundred plus songs on there and i left it up there for a while i think it wasn't up until like last year that i just like decided to put it on private so yeah that's there's definitely a huge catalog i'm just giving you extra information but there's definitely a huge catalog of shit Oh yeah. And on your, on your like Instagram bio, you, you, it says like greatest rapper alive. Like is, is that, how do you like define your music? Like, how do you like, what's, it's hard to talk about genres these days because everything's so just intertwined. And I think like the yeah. type of music you make, like I wouldn't really say you're making rap anymore. Like sounds like you're used to, to rap battle, but like, what do you what do you call your music? What do what do you say you are when when people ask what do you do? You know, when people ask me what I do, I just make music, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like music is just an expressive form for me. That's all it is. You know, uh, that's that's literally all it is. But on the same token, too, with music, it's uh, bro. What people don't know is just that 
even as I was making the last project that I was making, I wasn't even aware that I was making an EP. I, j- I just got called out to like, hey, you know, let's, let's go record some songs and say, okay, cool. And, you know, I, re- I recorded all of What Box in a week, but I'm not knowing that I'm making What Box and just making some songs. You know, the team gets back together, say these songs, these songs, these songs, we like these songs and we want to make a project out of it. Um, I said, cool, yeah, fuck it. I, I like those songs a lot too. Some of those songs I brought to them, I think like one or two I brought to them. The rest I made while I was out there in LA and we released everything. And I remember specifically saying, bro, I was like, I don't want this to be um, under anything but rap. I want it to be under alternative rap at the very least, like, or at the very, like, the least or the most. Like, I was like, you just hip hop rap or alternative rap. Um, cause that's, that's basically my roots. You know, my roots is very hip hop, rap, R and B oriented. And I feel growing up, I definitely, you know, I'm listening to a lot of commercial indie commercial rock songs that really impacted me a lot. You know, I feel like it's so hard because impact is greater than quantity, bro. You could, I could love one, I could love uh, uh, hip hop and everything like that, but then Let's say I listen to three albums and I love these, these three rap albums, but then I hear a single song like Wake Me Up When September Ends. And for some reason, th- I can't get this shit out the fuck out of my head. You know what I'm saying? So like, it, I have my moments with like uh, rock for sure where I've been influenced definitely heavily and uh, I can't deny it. But I also won't say that like, oh yeah, I was the biggest rock kid where like every day of my life, every second of my life was spent listening to rock. No, 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 no. I definitely feel like I was influenced by it uh, subconsciously. It was never a conscious decision to be like, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. And I never wanted it to be portrayed that way. But when people ask me what I do, I tell people I make music, like whatever I'm feeling, you know, if somebody, if, if I'm in a studio with an engineer or producer and they're pulling up some beats that they've made and I feel called to do this one, if it's a rock song, it's a rock song, but that's what I feel called to do. So. I'll get on that one. Um, and that's how things happen. But where I'm at now, I'm looking at things that I definitely want to be known as a rapper. The rapper is Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that's why you see that type of shit on my bio. Because yeah. he believed in himself so much that like every song he said, I'm the best rapper alive. Like, that's how I feel. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like you have to have that confidence. And 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 that's why I told myself, I was just like, you know, I'm the best rapper alive. He throw me. That's just how I feel. And I feel like I want people to know that like, I'm so much more definitely than just like an alternative genre bending artist because being being genre bending right now has become super saturated if you ask me. It's it's such a thing where it's just like it's going to come back around to where people will value people who are very good in that one lane because everybody's just so good at meshing and blending things now. It's becoming a thing. You know what I'm saying? So now people are going to value that that oh dang like I haven't heard a person who could do like rap just like this or a person who could like so like singularly or a person who can focus straight up just on rock and just be fucking awesome at rock a person that can focus straight up on R&B and just be focused on R&B I think people are going to spin around and start appreciating that shit so much more now because everyone it seems to me that like everyone or every new artist or that's getting picked up is just uh, a genre bending multi in- instrumentalist genius. And I think that like people are going to just be missed. They're going to miss it. They're going to miss. Hey, I missed back in the days when they had that one dude that was just awesome at rock, bro. Like now these days, I can't tell what I'm listening to. It might feel good and I love it, but I think what people love a lot too is identity, bro. We love an identity and and I think we respect that in the deep and um, But that's no shade towards genre bending artists such as myself, too, because I do the shit, too. But I also do know, like, where my heart and my core relies. And that's why you see things like that in the bio, because I'm taking a stand against a lot of things. But, yeah, um, I say a lot of that to say I didn't necessarily get my way with what box. But that's why the title of the project is the title of the project, because I'm combating early forms of this is what we want you to do. And people aren't aware of that. They're just like, damn, this kid's dropping a project, this genre bending project. Like, no, like 
I'm asking the people who are trying to pin me in a box and tell me we're going to release a rock project after I just said, no, I don't want to release a rock project. I want this to be rap and I want this to da 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 just don't make it this. And they made it that. So I'm forced to like, okay, I'm going to title this what box? Question mark. You know what I'm saying? Like, where are you going to put me in? What box are you definitely, what, what box do you feel like you, you can define me and pin me inside of? So it's just little things like that. Uh, but people will say that like they don't see the rapper side of me, but anybody else who's led up and followed my music up to now, they'll say that like, dang, bro, like we missed it when Terry used to ooh, ooh or whatever the case may be. A lot of people who know, they know. And um, I think rapping is uh, my strong suit for sure. One of my strongest, um, one of my strongest suit. Uh, and I'm just going to follow up after that. That's, that's really what it is right now. I feel gonna, like I'm following up after that. Are we gonna see a whole EP or album, like a whole like hundred percent? This is this is rap, like no like mix with alternative. Like, are we gonna are we gonna get that album soon? Okay, I love that. Yes, little, yes, sir. That's up. you know, and 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 this is the thing though, because here's what it is. It's like what box? Because this is a question to the fans too. It's a question to everybody, bro. Like, who are we to define anybody at the end of the day? You know, because I feel like as humans, we're like multi-dimensional. You know, one day I wake up, I might be sad. I might be happy. And it's not even just one day at one moment. You know, I might be angry. We're content. We're, we're, we're in an alternating state. So it's like, how can I like expect somebody to be one thing, you know, if they want to be multiple things, allow them to be that. And that's where I'm coming at with everything, too. I think it's really cool when people can be one thing and just drive the fuck out of that one thing. And I also think it's cool when people can be multiple things at once. If that includes being one thing at a more than the other thing at certain moments, then that's just what it is. I feel like we've, we've gotten to a point in music where just people just feel like you have to like let people know what you are, who you are, where you are when you are, why you are. And these are the questions we don't even know about life. So how the fuck do we expect one person to be able to answer a lot of these things through their artistry and creativity? I feel like if we're going to really, you know, let uh, art imitate life, then we have to be open to allowing people to see that like, damn, you can be more than one thing. Just like life, bro. Life is more than just one thing. You ask somebody to define what life is, bro. You might get a lot of fucking definitions. And but that's where I'm at right now too. Um, what box, bro? That's a question to everybody, bro. What box should I do next? What box should I come out of next? You know what I'm saying? I could I could drop a whole ass R and B project next. Who the fuck knows? You know. But that's just what comes with that, though. I mean, I'm I'm definitely excited to hear some some different genres. I I was talking to an artist the other day. Sadly, the interview got all scrambled with audio, but he's also like going through like a a change. Like he's going from making like almost like bedroom indie pop music to like he's like I'm doing a disco album. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah! Like completely switching up. Like it's 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 cool to see. It's definitely exciting to see. I think it's I think it's part of a journey, man. You know, everybody has their journey in life. I feel like in life, bro, the journey that of being a newborn and then becoming who we are to this present day, in this present day, in this present moment is amazing. You just see everybody changing and we're in a constant state of change. And you know, I look at things like that and I say that's what, you know, life is. That's what, you know, art is imitating life like I said before. So but that person, you know, like you say, he, he's saying be from bedroom to disco, like this is his journey. And I think it's, you know, it's great that we get to witness people on their journey. And sometimes not everybody's journey is on display for the world to see. So it's a lot easier to just be like, OK, cool. Um, this is abnormal. Or this is normal when somebody's journey is like a little bit, quote unquote, dysfunctional or it doesn't seem like it's straying in one way. No, I, I honestly just think that like we're we're witnessing pe people's journeys and people are changing before our eyes. And it's sometimes it's a little hard to grasp, but to understand that should be a little bit more easier when once we can take a step back and look at what the fuck is actually going on around us. Like shit, we're actually always fucking changing. We're always in a state of change. 
And I respect, the, and we can go back to like my favorite artist, Wayne. You know, Wayne went from Hot Boys to Lollipop to like making like really dope rock music to skateboarding and truck fit. Like he's already done everything. So it's like, it's so hard for for people to just be like, oh, this is weird or new. When we really look back into it, it's just like, oh wait, no, it's actually been done before. You know, yeah. it, it, it was just a lot more gradual back in those days. I think that's what made it a lot more um, acceptable, but shit's cool. It's okay though, but I love that though, that he's going from bedroom to fucking disco. That's yeah. what I'm talking about, bro, I love that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I think like one of the, my last questions, I, I only ask because I, I don't, I, I used to do concert photography, but I, I don't really go to a lot of concerts. But recently I like I went to a Dominic Fike show. He's also one of my favorite artists. And I was like, damn. I was like, I went on on the internet. And I was like, yo, like Terry, like where where the fuck is Terry performing next? And I was like, fuck, he's not performing anywhere. So like, when are the next shows? Like, are you doing shows? Like, do I have to fly out to Florida to see you live? Like, like, what the fuck is up? Like, come up to New York or like I live in Philly, like come through to Philly, like pop out, do a show. Like yeah. I want to see you live, bro. Nah. All right. You know, listen, um, live shows right now. It's, it's a huge funny thing. I have to definitely speak to my agent about things like that. My agent's a shit, bro. I fucking love him. Um, he's, he's really looking out for me and trying to make sure that like any and every show that I do is just like, you know, out of my best interest in, in making sure that everything is aligned up. And I have to get with him to, to talk to him because I've been talking to him about wanting more shows and wanting to do, um, they don't always have to be these massive shows. Um, smaller shows is cool too. Things that just make sense and eventually working around um, headlining my own show. But I have a show coming up this month actually in Florida though. Um, I'll send you a flyer for that too. But it's gonna it's gonna be on the twenty sixth. Gonna be on the twenty sixth. But it's not. Do you, have you heard of the artist four five four? Oh yes, yeah. He's another one of my like, like to be honest. Like I've been following him for a few years now, and I fucking I've tried to work with this man so many goddamn times. It never <laughs> works out. I fucking love four five four, and like, yeah, Swills. Yeah. Yeah. He's, so he's fire. He's so fucking fire. He's going to be basically headlining that show, and I, I like go on right before him. Um, I, you know, I, I'm I'm always like type iffy about, not even iffy about things, but like I'm I'm in a constant state of just like in my mind, and you know, there's a whole bunch of mental gymnastics that I got to jump through just to even do certain things. Sometimes, not all the times, but at times, I have to combat myself. Um. But I got I got the opportunity to to do this performance. I wasn't going to do it, but I was like, you know what? Let me fucking do it anyways. Um, but yeah, on the 26th in Fort Myers, Florida, I'm going to be okay. performing. Uh, 454 is going to be there. It's going to be lit. It's going to be a fun time. But, bro, we have, like, it's funny as hell because we have a weird history um, that I just picked up on I, years and years ago before I left to L.A. Like, I got on this song with, like, this other uh, artist, uh, homie of mine that goes by Ike Offline, really dope dude. And um, he got me on his song. And I'm, I'm just finding out like this year that 454 produced it. Oh. I, I, I had no fucking idea. I had no idea. Cause you know, I'm just finding out about 454, like maybe like towards the ending of last year. Like, that's when I found out about him. I was like, yo, this shit's insane. I'm like, I fucking love this shit. This shit sounds dope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be out here, man. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what, you, what your schedule looking like, but if you can pop out, just pop out. Do what you do, bro. I'll see, I'll see what I can do. This month is like a little, a little weird, but I'll see what I can do. And also like, yeah, if you could do, if you talk to your agent and see if you can do like a show up in like New York. I mean, New York is obviously like a, a hotbed of music like it would probably be easier for you to do one there than philly but if you do one in new york let me know um i, I would yeah i'm always up i'm in between new york and philly because I, I i work on music video um music videos all the time so i do lighting um so yeah i'm, I'm in and out of new york all the time but 
Yeah. Or I, I would even help you fucking put together a show. I would love to help put together some shit because I love. No, comedy. yeah. These listen. Um, yeah, listen. Um, I feel like I'm going to get, get with my agent. We're going to talk about it. We for sure going to talk about it. I'm going to keep you posted. I feel like New York is probably going to be that that option. I feel like New York, the last time I performed in New York was last year. I, I did a little Soho House tour run. And um, that was my oh, yeah. first time doing a little, like, two weeks, like, tour, like, stop by stop by stop. And I got, like, the feel for it and things of that nature. But even right now, where I'm at in life, bro, I'm just, you know, I'm going with the flow. I'm I'm just letting go of the steering wheel, bro, because I've tried holding the steering wheels and driving that motherfucker. And I just feel like, bro, it's, it's, it's always better when you just, just let go of the steering wheel, bro, and just let things just fall into place. You know, I, I don't want to control anything apart from, like, my artistic creativity. Anything outside of that is just, like, it is what it is. But I feel, I think New York, for sure, for sure. I'm going to keep you posted on that, though. Yeah, get like ecstasy to come down from like Canada or something and like do like a, a show with him or something. Brother, great. hey, last 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 I spoke with ecstasy, he's fucking in, he's fucking around in uh Europe right now. He's performing yeah. in Europe and shit. Like, yo, he's about, he's going crazy. That's yeah. Boy. You should probably honestly that might be a lot of people like go and tour in Europe because Eastern Europe is like so like they're ahead of the U.S. market. Like they understand music a lot more. Um, so yeah, like going to fuck, like going to like Berlin and performing and shit. Like all the all the videos I see of that, I'm always like, oh, I gotta get out there. No nah, facts. Shows. Listen, one thing I will say is when I went under the alias of Pitch Black, a lot of my fans came from Russia. Yeah. A lot of them. A lot of them came from Russia. A lot of my plays came from Russia. Uh I was making and building relationship with Russian producers. It's crazy, bro. Like, so you're right. I've been hearing about that uh, musically too. That okay, these people are po possibly. I, I wouldn't say I don't know if they're ahead of people in the U.S. because I just I just don't know, and I wouldn't want to say that. But I've heard that be said before, where people yeah. have been telling me like, "Yo, hey, you know, they're maybe they're not they're ahead, more but open they're to shit. they're yeah, they're more willing to 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 latch on to like a smaller artist. Like here in the United States, yeah. like to to win people over like I used to help throw concerts in my hometown um it was a big college town and fucking trying to like put together concerts for college kids they don't give a shit like they don't like you could put the coolest lineup of like the 10 like most talented people they don't give a fuck they're like I want to see Jack Harlow I want to see like Drake and it's like I want to see Cardi it's like we live in a town of 60,000 people like Drake isn't pulling up for like under like we're talking millions like these, yeah. these shows we're putting up like not that many of you guys are coming like we used to throw shows with like 500 to a thousand people it's like you guys can't afford these big shows like so I gave up on that shit I'm glad at least Philly has a good music scene but I'm yeah you know I, I, re I respect people who come to shows period you know because I feel like the people who come out to shows and do things like that, they're, they're the doers of the world, you know? It's not just the person that's on stage, just the people that's out there in the crowd as well. Like, it's a lot of stuff that goes into making it to a concert. Like, yeah. you had to buy your ticket, you had to, like, physically get there and then be there, be around a group of people that you don't know. You know, we're all doing it together, you know? So I feel like I, I, I always respect people who just love going out and just being in shows and being in the environment of creativity, bro, because that's really what it is. There's so much more typically going on at shows than just the music, you know. This is this is a place where you can commute with people. And I think, I don't know, I feel like maybe because we're, we're like social media babies, bro, that, you know, things have like warped a little bit. That's why every time I go out to a show and I see the people that's there, I'm like, yo, you guys are the ones, bro. Like, Y'all are the doers of the fucking world. You guys are the one that's really doing this shit, bro. Because a lot of people, like you said, they're not pulling up to these shows, bro. Like, so I I love it whenever I see a huge crowd of people come in and I just got to give them their flowers, bro. Like, they're the fucking doers, bro. They're the doers. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we'll wrap this up. Um, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Anything else, like, coming up that you're like, I want the world to know? Man, shit. Listen, bro. I want to. I want the world to know that, like, 
you know, I'm doing, I'm doing, this next project is definitely going to be something. It's like, if you're going, if they're expecting it to be like the last project where they can't pin me to anything, um, you know, it's not going to be that. And for the people who are willing to like still be open and rocking with it, I love y'all. And to the people who probably won't rock with it, I love y'all too. Um, choose your own. But definitely know that like the next thing that I come out with and that I'm dropping is it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. That's all I gotta say. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be intellectual, it's gonna be emotional, it's gonna be a piece of everything. I'm bringing my home to the world versus bringing the world to my home. Oh, yeah. Well, it was nice talking with you. Is there like a, I guess you just gave your final thing, but we'll just say our, our final goodbyes and then we can chop it up afterwards. But thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. This is Terry Resume. This is Cole Frazier. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Have a good day.